I'm gonna, leave, I'm gonna leave with something here, guys. I, I, that's kind of weighing on on our hearts and our minds. Um, just want to say our thoughts and prayers go out to you know, everyone involved in a terrible tragedy at the University of Virginia. Um, thinking of Coach Elliott and his team, uh, and the impact goes way beyond football, and, and it impacts the people in our building as well. You know, and uh, our thoughts are with them and their families. Um, and just because they aren't athletes, sometimes they don't get the notoriety, but four young people passed away and our neighbors at the University of Idaho. And, uh, you know, prayers out to them and, and their families. And it, it, I take the coaching hat off and I go to the dad, the husband, the father. And uh, sometimes our guys get judged by the man in the arena, okay, as players. And... There's a real emotional side to this game. There's a real human aspect to this game. There's a real personal aspect to this game. And relationships mean a lot to us. And these guys mean a lot to us. Um, you know, so there's a lot of people hurting in this world. Um, you know, our thoughts and prayers as a program are with them. And uh, just takes you back to why we're here. I think that's really important. Okay, we're here for young people. Families entrust our program with their young men. It's a responsibility that I take very seriously, being a dad of three, being a husband, being a father. Um, so I want to make sure that's first and foremost uh, with where our program's at today. Coach, one thing I wanted to ask about, just over the last few weeks, I've noticed on Twitter, you have a lot of situations where guys are tweeting out highlights of their teammates and kind of promoting their teammates and big plays they make. Is that something you've encouraged them to do, or are they just doing that on their own? I think it's a little bit of both. I think they have a genuine appreciation for other people's success. I think it's also part of the new NLI, and, and we're partnered up with Influencer, and they have access to all these things that they never have before. Um, so I think that's been nothing but a positive, and I think our creative team does an amazing job of aiding the stories of our guys. All right? So I think it's been a mixture of a bunch of things. Obviously, uh, fair to say there's a big storyline going into this week. Just um, any reaction to what Jaden said on, uh, on Saturday about it's personal and to just watch? Well, I think first and foremost, um, I'm not a big believer in external motivators. Okay, There's going to be great storylines for everybody the next two weeks. Okay, But Washington State football as a program, uh, we're focused on what we need to do. Okay, Because we just watched the tape, and there's a lot of things that we need to focus on to be better. Okay, and, you know, did you circle this game, Coach? No, I circle every game. Our team circles every game, right? It's the only opportunity that we have this week. Um, we're not playing one individual. We're playing an Arizona team uh, that's much improved. Credit to Coach Fish, credit to his recruiting, credit to his staff. They're, they're much improved. Uh, offensively, they're one of the best in the country. They have a defense that's playing fast and hard. Our focus needs to be on that and what we need to do and improve and what we need to do this afternoon to take a game plan in and apply it to practice and what we need to do throughout the week so we're peaking on Saturday. Uh, that's, that's where our focus needs to be throughout the week. No, you've, you've raved a lot about Lee and just how he has stepped into that role. And just watching some of the highlights from Saturday, there's several instances where he comes across, he pulls, he blows up a guy. Uh, there was, I think, a Nakia run where he pancakes a defensive back. Just... It, it, is he kind of at that point where every week it's something new and it's just something better and it's almost surprising you just how good he has gotten this quick? Watch the sweep play to Leighton Smithson. Watch what him and Cooper did. I mean, it's just incredible to be five yards into the end zone. Everything is new to him, okay? It's a new position, it, it's new, uh, like, but every week it's amazing. The, not just the small steps, the strides forward Lili is taking. And... Uh, I think he's well aware. Uh, he's having fun out there. He's getting better. He comes to practice every day. I think he's been really physical and tough, but he's taking big strides forward and uh, just really excited about what he's brought to our offensive line, our team, and just really excited for him, right? Because I remember that first conversation when we told him we were going to move him, right? Um, but this is the trust that he had in our vision, and this was the vision, and uh, just really proud of him. Coach, any strengths and weaknesses that you've seen of Arizona so far? I mean, I haven't watched a ton of tape uh, this morning, and I'll catch up on that. Um, you know, but obviously they have one of the best, you know, pass games in the country. Uh, we're facing two of the top 
uh, 10 pass offenses in the country the last two weeks, right? So defensively, we're going to be extremely challenged on not giving up big plays. Uh, the numbers of Arizona say that their like per attempt is over nine, which is incredible. So big plays, not just small plays, big plays. Uh, so I think uh, that's going to be an important focus. And then anytime you talk about passing offense, you need to match that with a four down rush. Right. I think we have the tools and the pieces and the guys to go uh, affect the passer the next two weeks. So that's going to be important. And then I look on the other side to see their defense. Uh, they're smaller uh, than, than most guys, but they're playing fast and aggressive and they move a lot to cra cause some issues. And 30 was a, was a, 31 was a problem all last game against UC, uh, UCLA. So uh, a team that's hungry, they're fighting for bowl eligibility, and uh, we need to match that intensity come Saturday. Will we see more shifts in the offensive line this upcoming week? Yeah, I mean, you know, Make's deal uh, l luckily wasn't um, anything major. It was another uh, ankle issue. So we'll see throughout the week as, as he goes. He might be limited a ton in practice, and we'll see what we can get him to on Saturday. Um, but it's all about finding the best five and where everyone's the most comfortable. And I thought Grant did an admirable job at left tackle. Obviously, that's not easy. We talked about that after a game, but we asked him to do – um, not many people can handle it. You know, so I'm proud of Grant. I'm proud of his effort. I'm proud of his confidence that we all have, and Coach McGuire has in him to go out there and do it. Uh, but it'll be another week of trying to find the best five. And earlier this season, you mentioned the secondary being thin. Uh, what, what specifically do you put stress on for them to perform against this high volume uh, passing team in Arizona? Yeah, we have been thin. I mean, uh, Sean D. Lang played all last game, Jaden and Sam, you know, and we got to create more depth at that position. But like I said, but I think because they've been locked in, I think the communication has been high. And anytime Armani Marsh is out there, he commands the ship, right? So I think they've done a good job of navigating those waters. And um, But we will be challenged extremely these last two weeks. Any update on the Farrell and Jay Lee? this point? Yeah, you know, both of them should be out there in, in some capacity this week, and we'll see where we can get them to on Saturday. I know, uh, Arizona, I think, has allowed uh, 40 points uh, defensively in, in the four of the last five games. Where does it seem like, I know you said you still got to watch some more tape, but just from what you've seen, where does it seem like opposing offenses are kind of hurting them? Uh, they're really in a variety of different ways. You know, sometimes they've been hurting themselves, you know, uh, you know, and those are things that we got to try to take advantage of a little bit. But I thought last week, you know, when they were sound and when they were doing things right and they're playing hard, I mean, they made plays. And uh, they harassed the quarterback last week. I think that was the biggest difference of how they have been playing um, to how they played UCLA. So uh, we got to stay out of the negative plays. We got to keep the ball moving forward and we got to take advantage of some things that we feel like we can. And that's taking the ball down the field. Okay, and uh, they've been giving up some big plays in the past game, and we got to take advantage of it. I'm watching the tape of, of your guys' game against ASU, uh, uh, what did you sense that was maybe off about the execution in the, in, in the second half? Did you feel like you guys were maybe affected by injuries a little bit? Anything pointed out there? Focus. Focus. Okay, we got to be able to handle leads and focus and want to finish. You know, so I think we showed a lot of those things this morning where we can grow and get better. And even just take it to the minute at the end of the game, we got two downs to get one yard. Okay, and I love that we didn't do anything fancy. We got to be able to move people and move the ball and get that yard and be tough. Toughness is a choice. We've talked about it a lot in this room. So, you know, we showed that to the team. Uh, what I love, Colton, is there's a lot of things we can get better at, right? So it is execution, maybe a little conservative at, at some points, you know, and, and keeping the foot on the gas. There's also situational awareness, right? We're in a situation where we have a field goal potentially uh, off of the opening drive of the second half to take it to a five-score game. We take a sack, like so many learns, right? So um, sometimes adversity obviously is a great teacher and we didn't finish the way we want to. So we got to focus on what we need to do and stay in the moment. And I think that that's kind of what lacked a little bit on the sideline on Saturday. In, in, in the past two weeks, especially defensively, do, does it feel like you're getting the kind of the same level of performance from each phase of the game? And is that maybe a, a you didn't have it as much in, in the earlier weeks and now, you know, D-line, linebackers, secondary, all kind of playing in tune right now, does it seem? Yeah, and I, I would probably say besides the Oregon game, I, I feel like we've played like that all season. 
you know, in real sync. There's been, you know, I've been up here talking about some times where we just haven't quite been tight. But to your point, I think everyone's been on the same page and they're playing really hard. And that's all that we can always ask of them. And like I said, a lot of that is player driven. And I said this after the game, but I mean it. Uh, you know, I get too much credit. You know, I'm not the one in the war room every day anymore. I watch a lot of the tape. We talk about a lot of the adjustments. But Coach Ward and the defensive staff are putting these plan together, and these guys are buying into what, you know, everyone's doing, and they're buying into the mentality, and ultimately they're buying into each other. How do you build, I guess, that focus on focus and staying in the moment um, this week in practice? Well, I mean, like I said, you identify what you need to work on, you know, and – we still want to win games to prove who we are as a team and as a program, you know. So I want guys that are all in on the improvement of what they need to do individually this week to get better, right? So, and it, like I said, it starts this afternoon. When we come back, what's our mindset going to be, right? When we wake up at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning and we attack that bubble practice, what's our mindset walking in, right? So I think it's important to focus on the minute and then the whole will come into it. I get, and you had some recruits in town this past weekend. Um, how, do, how do you think it helps for them to see kind of the Palouse at its sort of ugliest but also finest, like the, the cold weather and just the intensity that your team brought to that game? It's all the finest. It's all part of being here, right? And biggest thing is that's the way we sell it, right? You want to be here, the Palouse is perfect for us. You better be blue collar. You better be tough. You better love ball. You better want a great education. You better value family over flash. Um, I think it's really important because we don't sell anything that isn't true. I don't try to pull the wool over people's eyes. Uh, we try to show in recruiting who we really are, right? And that's what really matters, okay? But I'm trying to make sure everyone in our program and in our community and, and our Cougs everywhere understand that recruiting is everything. And everyone plays a vital role in that, including the fans, right? Staying for 60 minutes, Right, being a being what you can do in every realm of it. Okay, we want to build a program. We are building a program right now, right? So everyone's got a vital piece to play. And when our people are here, and all they talk about is, man, these people are incredible. They love it. They wear it on their sleeves. I always say our food tastes better in this region when we win. We're invested, okay? And that investment is taking new heights, okay? And I think that's important as part of the recruiting piece. We're seven weeks away from signing day. Right? i got to focus on this team and what we need to do to finish this season, but there's always focus on what we need to do to bring new people in here and elevate our program right? and make the most competitive atmosphere in the Pac-12. That's what I want in that locker room. So, um, you know, that's what our focus is on, too, anytime we bring people here. And then I know you said you haven't had a chance to necessarily see tape, but what have you seen from Jane Delora this year, and has any part of his game changed from last year or gotten or grown? Um, you know, I, I've always been really impressed with what Jaden can do, you know, and I appreciate everything that he's done for us. Um, you know, I think one of those things that, that's important is sometimes change is good for everybody, you know, and I think that's what this situation's about, and he's probably as good as it gets off script, okay? And he, he's a good improviser, and, he, and they've been making a ton of plays scrambling around, right? So I think it's a unique challenge, and, and we got to try to make sure that, you know, that we can affect the passer, and it's really hard and complicated to do. How have you seen uh, Deion Henley grow um, from when he got here, from coming from Nevada to, to now, almost, you know, going, going to a bowl game? Yeah, I think Deion's growing daily, you know, and the challenges of each week and, and the preparation and what it takes, and he's working to be a professional. Like, I think those things are, are really important, but, man, what a playmaker he's been. And I think that's his best trait. When he's out there and he's confident and he has his eyes right, yeah, I don't think there's there's many better in the whole country than Dan. And I, I've said that many times, and I truly believe that. So he, he's been incredible, and uh, you know, just wish we had him for more years. Coach, clinch bowl eligibility this weekend. Just what's that like for you guys at this point in the season? Well, I, I think it's one of those things where we don't set out a ton of goals besides being 1-0, and but I think it's the expectation of our program that that's where we want to be at the end of the season, you know. This is the 18th bowl game in Washington State football history. We've been playing for over 100 years. And I said this after, like anytime our people don't take this as a big accomplishment, right, we're doing something wrong. And our players should feel that way too. I mean that. Our whole program should. Faculty, administration, President Schultz, boosters, alumni, fans, like it's a big deal. Um, 
but it isn't always the end goal either, right? So I think it's keeping it in perspective that we have accomplished something. There's still a lot more out there for us. Uh, we still want to prove the team that we can be, and we have an amazing opportunity this week to do it. I know you talked about it a little bit post game, but now that you've maybe had time to go through the film and all that, just Nikia Watson the yeah. past two weeks. How big has it been to have him back? I'm really proud of that kid. Uh, I really have. Um, you know, all the way remember even back to Wisconsin and how hard he played there, to getting some tough yards, uh, to going through an injury, to battle back, to push through. But you guys see it. That's why I keep getting all the questions. The confidence when he has the ball and how he's changed the look of what we wanted to do. Uh, has been really impressive, and it's not always easy. So when you watch the film, even that fourth and two on the goal line, there's an unblocked hitter coming right at him. He ran him right over to finish. Like Those are the tough yards that we're talking about, and it's not always easy. It's not always flashy. It's just a choice. So I think he brought that back to our offense, which was much needed. Uh want to know from your perspective, Coach, did you see Jaden Delora's quotes after the last game? I'm aware of them, you know, but like I said, our focus is on what we need to do to get better, period. Okay, anything else is a distraction to the mission, right? We're playing an Arizona team, right? That's the mission. That's what we're trying to accomplish, and I'm excited about getting back to practice tomorrow morning. From your perspective, what's it like for the guys in the locker room, you know, a guy that was their brother last year, is, is there, what's, what's that like for them to play up against him? I'm not them, you know, we're focused on Arizona, you know, and I think that'll be the message from our guys. We're excited about this opportunity uh, to get back to 500 in the league and to advance to where we want to go. That's, that's the whole focus. And we choose our focus, okay? We choose where we want our thoughts to go, right? Because where your mind goes, your energy flows, okay? And our mind needs to be tomorrow morning's practice and what every person and every person in our program needs to do to get better, period. Starts with me. Okay, I'm going to set the tone this afternoon. We're going to have a great walkthrough. We're going to get ready. We're going to prepare, and we're going to be mature competitors. That's what this is about, nothing else. Uh, Pac-12 award just came out. A uh, guy by the name of Brennan Jackson wins defensive lineman of the week. Uh, maybe not a huge surprise after that game, but just I mean, we've asked about Brennan a million times, but it always seems like he does something new every week. Just – it stems all the way, Jamie, back to the offseason. He had his first offseason that he was healthy. And you saw those results and in the summer, in the fall camp, now into the season. So proud of that kid. You know, I, I am. And maybe he didn't get all the notoriety coming in, but we knew what type of player BJ can be. And to see him do it and to see the, all the hard work, like I said, a lot of people see the results. right? I get to see – the extra weight sessions, how much he takes care of his nutrition, and the character that that man has deserves everything he's getting. There was a play, I think it was Andrew Edson's sack um, yeah. against, uh, against ASU, and not to focus on plays because obviously he moved on from that, but uh, one thing I noticed is Noosey comes down and basically tackles the guard, and that frees Eddie. Is that by design, or did he just decide to do that on his own? You know, Jamie's watching tape. <laughs> Holy moly, because when you asked about Eddie Sack, I was going to go, the guy who got the sack was Nusi Milani. Uh, we call it an A-game stunt where we're reading and picking off of the center. Um, that's one of those things, as, you show, as we did show the team this morning. Eddie gets his name in the paper. He gets the recognition. He gets the TV time. Nusi made the play. Okay, and that's what I'm talking about, a genuine appreciation for the effort and commitment that everyone makes. And we celebrated Noosey so much this morning because of that. And, uh, you know, um, man, what an X's and O's guy you are. That's, I'm proud of you. How about those Packers? I'm ready to tank the season and get a higher pick. I'm sorry to all Packer Nation out there. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm sorry. And remember, you're talking to a stockholder here. This isn't just some average Joe. Um, but, yeah, um, but no, great. Anytime you can beat the Cowboys, the Cowboys haunted uh, my middle school years in the 90s. Uh, so, yes, it's always good to beat the Cowboys. Your defense has performed all season. Uh, they performed, performed really well against ASU. What can they do to get better uh, this, just coming up on the, the rest of the season? Our defense, I always say that. It's an important distinction. Um, but the biggest thing is, you know, we, we had a couple of little tackling issues the last couple of weeks. Of our aim points have been a little high in what we call keeping the cup, right? Keeping your angles. That's what happened on the long touchdown. We just lost angles, uh, and we came in and tried to tackle them high. So, like I said, that's what excites me about coaching. You know, we're out there. We're trying to get better. Um, you know, so I would think the tackling the last couple of weeks at times hasn't been as sure as we need them to be. 
Uh, and those guys will take a look at the film and we'll, we'll attack it tomorrow morning. Um, what did you learn last year about bowl game prep practices that you intend to apply this year? Obviously, it's a few weeks away, but yeah. yeah, we call it winter camp, and it's a big deal. You know, we have a lot of freshmen. We are a young team that needs those extra practices, so it's a blend of giving your older players time to rest and recover, and then make sure we're prepared for the bowl game, and getting those young guys a ton of practices, a ton of reps. It's a maximum of 15 extra practices that we really take advantage of for those guys. So. Um, some people call it bowl prep, we call it winter camp. And uh, it kind of just gives you a different viewpoint uh, on what you're trying to accomplish with some of those young guys. So it's just as big for that as it is for the old guys to uh, have extra time together and, and be competitive and want to win those games.